top story tonight, exclusive video as a member of the state house goes from lawmaker to lawbreaker. Representative Corrine Ching appears before an Oahu judge today accused of driving nearly 80 miles per hour on a popular highway last month. Minnesota Moto tonight with the live local late breaking details. Well, scientists have long suspected there could be water up there on the red planet. Now they say they have the real proof. And NASA's Phoenix Lander today actually tasted icy water from a soil sample on Mars. And where there's water, ah, well, there could be life along the fancy of space buffs everywhere. A concerned citizen has filed a challenge with the city clerk's office questioning the legality of Kirk Caldwell's nomination papers. When the summer games get underway here in 8808, the athletes will be competing for gold in a total of 31 different venues. But center stage for the summer games will be right here at the stadium affectionately known as the Bird's Nest. And Stephanie, the attack here at Pearl Harbor is still considered to be the greatest single naval defeat in U.S. history. Some of the dwindling number of survivors join here again at Pearl Harbor today, along with military brass and political dignitaries, to once again commemorate this time the 66th anniversary of the attack here at Pearl Harbor. And another ceremony today, finally after 66 long years, a new dedication, a new memorial here on Ford Island. I want to step out of the way so that you can see it. It is the USS Oklahoma Memorial. And as you can see, some people still here looking at it. It was dedicated just this afternoon. It's a memorial that now stands as yet another reminder of those who displayed great bravery and those who lost their lives on December the 7th, 1941. It's truly difficult to get a true perspective of just how big this fire is until you come up here in the air. At about 2,000 feet, you can see the sheer enormity of what this fire has done. The hills are simply blackened for miles down the Santa Cooley coastline. And as you look out, you can see what a marvelous job one of the firefighters and federal firefighters have done. You look at the Kahe power plant, and it is black, a ring of black all around the perimeters. The power plant saved through the diligent efforts of the firefighters. Same goes for many of the homes along the ridge. But because the view from up here gives you such a true feeling for how large this fire is, Governor Linda Lingle is also flying today in one of the large Army CH-47 Chinook helicopters. And in fact, she's going up with several members of her cabinet. Peter Young from the Department of Land and Natural Resources, Rod Varaga from the Department of Transportation. Because this fire is affecting traffic and so many thousands of motors trying to get in and out of the Leeward Coast. Also, Ed Tech Sheriff from State Civil Defense. So this fire is affecting a lot more than just firefighters that are battling it. They have the assistance from four to five helicopters out here, a couple of the big Army Chinook helicopters. And by the way, the water drops from them, a thousand gallons they can carry in their bucket. That's compared to the 100 gallons that Air One with the Honolulu Fire Department can drop. So about five helicopters, more than 100 firefighters, and that represents more than a quarter of the total manpower for the Honolulu Fire Department it's still out here. The line of cars, very slow going once again on Farrington Highway, but the smoke is not the problem that we have seen the last couple days. Certainly that is good news, and it appears that the hot spots are finally down to a minimum. That's right, Stephanie. Normally at this time, the inner island terminal would be bustling with activity. I want you to take a look behind me. It's a very eerie sight today. After 61 years in business, all these counters here at Aloha Airlines absolutely silent. And I want to show you something over my left shoulder now. We're going to take a shot up here. Maybe it's some kind of an April Fool's joke, but look at the board. It says flights to Kahului, Hilo, Lihue, and Kona leaving at 6, 605, 610, and 615 are all on time. Of course, we know it's no laughing matter. Maybe an April Fool's joke. Maybe someone's sense of humor, but those flights aren't going anywhere. As you saw, those planes are grounded tonight. Howard Yashevsky is an anchor for our NBC affiliate in Honolulu, KHNL. Howard, good morning to you. Good morning to you, Matt. You said it right. We call this place paradise, but the last 18 hours have been anything but, especially for a lot of visitors, many of whom are spending their last night on vacation sleeping here. How does this compare to prior disasters that may have happened involving troops at that base? Well, the reality is uh, it's a very small base compared to Camp Pendleton, where, of course, more than 400 people have lost their lives in Iraq. We've lost about three dozen here. But this loss of life yesterday, 27 soldiers, that is the single largest U.S. military loss of life in the 50th state since the attack on Pearl Harbor, December 7, 1941. And tonight, lava from Kilauea is no longer flowing to the sea. Oh, it's spectacular. The result is a new and spectacular lava fountain. And the latest images have even the most veteran volcano watchers and scientists in a state of awe. 
The 4th of July holiday may have come and gone, but perhaps the greatest fireworks show on Earth shows no signs of slowing down. We had a sort of a different pulse uh, overnight that uh, further ruptured the tube and possibly blocked it, so we don't have much coming down as far as the ocean entry. Uh, but there are some pretty spectacular uh, low fountains up uh, higher near the rift zone. On the 4th of July, lava flowed freely through the tube system before entering the ocean in dramatic fashion. You know, the, the whole summit's been uh, pretty full of uh, lava for the last couple, three years, and, and all this is, uh, you know, part of the list of consequences of that, I think. Kawahikawa says when the tube system has ruptured in the past, the molten rock still makes its way down to the sea, something he expects to see in the coming days as new surface flows are created. In the meantime, all he and anybody else can really do is sit back and enjoy the spectacular show, courtesy of Mother Nature. It's sort of hard to describe. There's so many things going on at once. The last year has uh, not been one of boredom, I can say that. Ah, uh, you can never get bored looking at that image. A daring videographer who prefers to make his living out at sea is sharing videotape tonight of an amazing encounter, one that shows the ferocity of one of the world's most feared predators. Alex Wergefeldt is no stranger to danger, and just last week he willingly came face to face with it while filming this feeding frenzy in the open ocean, about 10 miles off Kahuku. Tiger sharks attacking the carcass of a giant sperm whale. We found it and then we spent about six hours drifting with it and uh, getting that footage. At first it was, it was kind of nerve-wracking when we, when we initially put the boat in. We had a couple of sharks that, that came at us um, a little more aggressively than, than uh, most of the encounters later on. He says two of the sharks seemed to work in tandem, circling their small boat, sizing them up. A few pokes and pushes with the cameras and the, the paddles and the sticks would, would kind of uh, steer them away from the boat. And, and um, yeah, luckily none of them fit into the, to the dinghy. A larger support boat was on hand just in case, but Wurgefeld says he and everybody else on the smaller boat for the most part kept their cool, something he attributes to their extensive diving experience. We've all had a lot of shark encounters, so I think we're all pretty uh, experienced when it comes to that. But, um, but yeah, I mean, it's a pretty intense experience and it's pretty interesting. And for those who question the sanity of filming this particular encounter at such close proximity, Wurgefeld says they all relied on their first-hand knowledge of just how tiger sharks react. He also says it's not really crazy as it appears. Looking at the video here, you know, it it looks probably a little bit crazier than it actually is. Um, I mean, it was it was pretty intense, but I don't think we really jeopardized our lives as much as what some people might make it out to be. Tonight, what remains of the carcass is now on shore washed up about a mile and a half from the Turtle Bay Resort. Shopping for a luxury car, perhaps an exotic sports car, the U.S. Marshal Service, believe it or not, may be the place to go. That is because they are auctioning off more than a million bucks worth of seized vehicles this week right here. Ah, the sound of an expensive automobile roaring to life from Lamborghinis to a Rolls Royce. Several Mercedes Benz, the pricey vehicles are up for auction. Shoppers got a chance to inspect the 19 vehicles today, all of them seized from one Oahu man back in 2005. Just coming to see what's available, what was around. I figured this is a good way to, to get a good deal on a vehicle. Bids for the cars range from $9,000 to $164,000. Anybody interested? can make an offer online before the auction wraps up on August the 6th. Seems like you were a little uh, excited there yeah, at the sight of go. those cars. A little Lamborghini. What do you oh, say? We pitch yeah. in a couple bucks, make our bid. All right, let's go ahead. Let's go. <laughs> well, surfers on Oahu, they know it's a great spot to catch some waves. Ah, but did you know there's a lot happening under the water of the Kaka'ako area that many surfers don't know about? We explain next in this week's Earth and Sea Project.